Let's talk about PRMX. I'm going to talk about the structure of the workbook and then uh, show how to set up a, and initialize a bubble calculation for nitrogen and methane and then show how to create a macro to iterate more quickly and finally I'll complete the bubble pressure calculation um, as shown in example 15.6 for nitrogen and methane. The workbook is combined the workbook combines PREOS, PRFUG, and the concepts of calculating and iterating using K-ratios. There are four tabs here, the, in, the instruction sheet, the K-value sheet, which organizes the calculation, and a vapor sheet to calculate roots for the vapor phase, and a liquid sheet to calculate roots for the liquid phase. Remember that the number of roots that is obtained at any condition depends on the composition as well as the pressure and temperature. Rather than reading all these directions, I'm going to lead you through the strategy. So first, at the top of the screen, we have a table for the components as well as the interaction uh, parameters, Kij. And then we have a block for the temperature and pressure and V over F. For a bubble calculation, V over F will be 0, for a do it will be 1, and for a flash it will be in between. We have an area where we can enter composition. It's listed here as Z, but for a bubble we would put the liquid composition, for a do we would put the vapor. The center block is the shortcut initialization area, where we use the shortcut K ratio method to calculate X and Y and the D which is the flash variable. Then we have an area over here. Um, this column will be used to uh, relate X and Y to each other using the flash equations. The X and Y's will be related according to V over F using this K ratio. The idea will be normally we would use the shortcut initialization to get a first guess and then we copy these values and paste these values over here. With these uh, revised values we can use the flash equations to generate X and Y and relate them to each other using this K according to what V over F is set. The Y values are going to be used, be used on the vapor sheet. and the X values used on the liquid sheet. The remaining columns summarize the keys that are calculated using different combinations of roots. For example, at the given condition, you can see the only column that has numbers is SFSFE, which indicates supercritical fluid, supercritical fluid equilibria. If we look at the vapor and liquid sheets, you can see that at the composition given, there's only one real root. So that column, um, the column on K values, is using this row from this table and this row from this table. When we change conditions, different rows may have valid numbers to use, and these other columns represent the um, different combinations that we could have. For example, this would use the three root region on each of the sheets with the vapor root from the vapor sheet and the liquid root from the liquid sheet. So let's set up a bubble pressure calculation for nitrogen and methane at 100 Kelvin. With a new problem, I typically have to, to insert new components. So let me just show you that quickly. I would go and pull the values from the prop sheet, copy, and then I choose paste values here to preserve the copy protection. I'm going to set the temperature to be 100, and I want the composition to be equal molar according to the example. Now I'm going to set up the um, shortcut, I'm going to set up the initialization, so I'm going to use the shortcut K ratio in this case. 
So you can see the Y's don't sum to 1. The pressure is way too high. All right, so let me try a lower pressure. Okay, and I can actually call up Solver, or in this case, I'll just use Goal Seek. And I want this cell to go to 1 by changing the pressure. Okay, and you will find that this is the value given in the problem statement as the shortcut K ratio, and this is the method that we learned in Chapter 10. Now the pressure that we found is the pressure according to the shortcut K ratio, not the Ping-Robinson equation. We're going to use these K, K ratios, however, as our guess. So we're going to copy these and we're going to guess that these are correct for the Ping-Robinson. I'll paste them here. That relates the X's and the Y's, and because I've set the V over F to be zero, these X's are going to match the composition that I entered. The K ratios provide a Y, and these X and Y values are then used on the corresponding tabs. You can see that the um, column now with numbers is column K, and the K value that I'm calculating using the Fugacy coefficient ratios and these compositions is different. So I want to copy this and I want to paste the values here. Be sure you paste values. Okay. Now I can make this occur more quickly by using a macro. You can see that it's pretty much converged with one iteration, but let's create a macro. On my installation, the macros are available on the Developer tab. I want to record a macro. I'm going to call this macro column K to help me remember that this iterates on column K. And I'll use Control K as a shortcut. You can do that if you'd like. I need to avoid a space, I think. Okay, so I need. I'm going to copy this and paste values and then quit recording. Okay. Now whenever I hit control K it will do the copying and pasting for me. Of course this is already converged. All right. Now what I would like to do with this converged answer, it's not the correct bubble pressure. Uh, the correct bubble pressure would give me a sum of Y's of 1. So I want to record uh, this pressure and this Y in a table. And then I'm going to, going to make a new guess for pressure, iterate, and record those values. So let's record, uh, let's try 0.45. Okay. Now it used these values at the K at this pressure, and it generated a new guess for K. This is in essence doing this inner part of the loop. I'm taking an a previous guess of K, I'm generating a new guess of K, and then I'm going to check to see if they sum to 1. If not, I'm going to adjust the pressure. Let me iterate using my Control K macro, which, by the way, I found I used a cap K, so I have to use Control Shift K, and you can see it converged very quickly. Now, I can use the value of 0.45 and 0.955 together with the previous values and do a linear interpolation of pressure and the sum of y. If I do that, I find the next guess I should use would be 0.428. And again, I call up my macro. And you can see I'm extremely close to the converged bubble pressure. And so I calculate a converged bubble pressure of 0.4275. One more comment. I created a macro that used Control K to use column K. For some problems, you'll find that the active column that's needed is different. And it's useful to create additional macros, for example, column Control L to call up and substitute um, column L, or Control M 
to substitute column M. 